Hi peeps. So one of you, a very wonderful special viewer and friend, sent me the horror tarot to review on the channel today. So I'm um, excuse me, not review, unbox. We will do, we will be doing a review down the road, of course, as always. But this is the horror tarot deck and guidebook published by Insight Editions at like a retail price of around twenty four ninety nine. It says it includes the illustrated 78 card deck and 128 page guidebook. So this has artwork by Abigail Larson, of course, and I believe, oh, I shouldn't say of course, but it's so weird. Here, here we go. Okay, it is. It's like a, it doesn't have the author and artist titles here. It has them on the top. So it says illustrated by Abigail Larson, written by Aria Gimter, Gim, excuse me. Aria Mitter, excuse me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, and Minerva Siegel. Uh, I am, I think I wanna say right off the bat that I was really on the fence with this because I adore the Darkwood Tarot. I know many of you do as well. We're all really big Darkwood Tarot fans. Like that guidebook is amazeballs. Even if you're a seasoned reader, there's something new for you to take away from that. And Abigail Larson's artwork is just phenomenal in the Darkwood Tarot. So. I was really, really leery. And then this wonderful viewer and friend said, I'm going to get it for you. And, you know, hopefully it's, it's everything that you think it's going to be. So I am going to try to approach this, not looking at it as I would the Darkwood Tarot and being disappointed. I want to try and look at this as its own deck, but I ha I was struggling from first image views on Amazon back when the deck was on pre-order. So the back says, add an element of horror to your tarot experience with this spooky and unique take on the traditional 78 card tarot deck. This deck tarot set features scenes and characters inspired by classic horror literature, films and beyond in gorgeous original illustrations. Featuring both major and minor arcana, this set also comes with a helpful guidebook explaining each card's meaning as well as simple instructions for easy readings. Packaged in a sturdy decorative gift box, this terrifying collectible tarot deck is the perfect gift for the horror fan or tarot enthusiast. It's spooky season for me, guys. I'm one of those really irritating people that starts celebrating Halloween in August. Um, anyhow, so that's the that's the description. I'm really hoping this deck isn't phoned in, you know, but we're gonna see. So. Handy Seam Ripper from one of my wonderful, lovely viewers, who I will be forever grateful to. So the side has the, oh, it's actually showing up better than how I can see it in the room because it's kind of dark and gray and cold today. There's the company and then there's the author and artist. I'm not gonna break a nail opening this box, guys. Do you remember that? <laughs> it's like, Epic unboxing experience with Racine. Oh, this is cute. Look at the inside. You guys know how much I love the inside of the boxes. That's so cute. Okay, I don't hate that. It's definitely not Darkwood Tarot's guidebook. It's much smaller, but it does have color uh, representations, full color representations. Um, let's see, there's a little introduction. A section on understanding oh cool and you can see like where's the beginning and then oh I'm sorry excuse me the majors are all in the dark red that's kind of cool and then the minor is this lighter color and the minors are a little bit you're getting a little bit less information than you did for the majors which is always like, I get it, but I don't love that because the minors are as important as the majors just in a different way. And then in the back is the caring for the deck and some card spreads. So we'll see, this remains to be seen. Um, I don't like these card backings. And that's okay though. It looks like a traditional Rider Waite Smith. The inside of the box is the same on the bottom there. I do, I do, I do like the cardstock though. It's matte and it's like a nice level of thickness. All right, let's see. 
So let's talk about the borders. How do we feel about the borders? I don't know. I was really against them looking at them online. I like them a little bit better in person. They're less uh, revolting. <laughs> Sorry. I really don't like borders. I will always be a person who prefers borderless decks. I know that like they were really out of style and now they're kind of coming back in. But I actually just prefer no borders when I'm working with my cards. But I understand. I get it. It's a thing. So I didn't really like the Fool, but my understanding is the premise is like the old gothic horror novels, right? Which I'm always down for, or like Lovecraft, you know, Mary Shelley kind of thing. This is the Empress. That's interesting. Okay, so because we have the border, the image itself is feeling a little bit small to me. But I think it's a deck that you can spend time with. Oh, I like the Hierophant. Not what I was expecting. The Lovers is stunning. I love the Chariot. Strength card's very Jack the Ripper. Interesting. The Hermit. Look at the Hermit. Okay. I'm, I kind of like the Majors. I'm not against these. I mean, I love Abigail Larson's artwork and I'm not against these Majors. Okay. I like Justice. You know, it doesn't feel like she phoned it in and just did a knockoff of Darkwood. Uh, I do feel like there's a different focus and intention in her artwork here. I love the death card. Oh my God, that's gorgeous. Temperance, interesting. Uh, I don't, I, this is the devil. This one I don't really like. I don't, I, I feel like more could have been done there. And this is the tower. I don't know little bit lost on me. I Only just because I see some cracks in the tower. I see the shadowed picture figure in the light, but I don't see the tower falling apart. It just looks like a castle to me with some lightning hitting it. The star is a Ouija board. Mm. I, feel like there's, I have another deck that did that as well. I do like the moon. Oh my God. The sun is I hate clowns. I don't know if you guys know this, but I really hate clowns. <laughs> Not my favorite depiction of the sun, but I think I get it from, and it looks like they're dealing cards. So I guess I get it from the perspective of the deck. I do like judgment. The world is okay. King of Swords, Queen of Swords. That's interesting. Um, I'm gonna have to read in the guidebook why the, this artistic choice was made for Queen of Swords, not, not what I would have expected there. Knight of Swords. There's a page. Don't know how I feel about the court cards so far. There's the ace, the two, the good old three, which is, as you guys know, my fave. Four of swords. I like the five. I feel like these images are like really, really close up. Kind of like zoomed in depictions and I almost wish we could pan back a little and see more that's going on in the imagery. I do love the six of swords though. The seven is beautiful. Eight of swords is gorgeous and I like that she didn't make it the same as the dark wood. There's the nine. Ten of swords is gorgeous. Okay, um, here's the King of Pentacles. 
All right, I don't know that I like the court cards. I'm gonna have to read and see like why the choices were made. There's the knight. The page of pentacles is in bed. Like, I don't know. What do you guys think? I don't know how I feel about the court cards. I'm so, I don't feel one way or the other about this deck. I feel kind of like in the middle and I don't, I don't know. Ace of Pentacles, interesting here for two of Pentacles. Yeah, like I feel like I'm just zoomed in and I'd almost like to be panned back so I can see what's actually going on. These have a little bit of a pip feel, I won't lie to you. And I don't like pip decks. Um, I just don't like decks with pips. I feel like some of them, like Six of Pentacles, we have something going on, right? But see, the Six of Pentacles is Devil's Deal in the Darkwood, and this is like, okay, now I'm back to Baphomet. It's interesting, but like, I feel like we already looked at the Devil's Deal in Darkwood. So seven feels like a pip. Eight feels like a pip. Nine of Pentacles, like this almost feels ominous to me, and I, I freaking love the Nine of Pentacles. As you guys know, Three of Swords, nine, nine of Pentacles, excuse me, not Knight, Nine. Nine of Pentacles is one of my cards where like, if I love it, I typically love the deck. I don't know, I like the King of Wands. I like the Queen. I don't get a mummy as Knight of Wands. Page of Wands is okay, I guess. Here's the Ace. The two, the three, the four of wands, the five, six, the seven, the eight. I, I don't, excuse me, this is the nine, I apologize. The Nine of Wands here. Um, I get that. Interesting choice here with the Ten. All right, here's the King of Cups. I don't mind that. There's the Queen. Knight of Cups, like I get that. I like that. Page of Cups, some, I just, some of the suits, I feel like, was she rushed? Did she not? I mean, she knows, okay, I do love the Two of Cups, but like I've seen this image before and I like it a little bit more panned out than up close like this. Um, you know, did I, I guess a little bit, some of these for me, I feel like, did she just rush through some? Did she feel like she wasn't, like, I don't get it. Six of Cups, like that. I guess the lilies make sense. There's the seven. I'm gonna show you guys the whole deck today. I know I don't normally do that. Um, I like the eight of cups. The nine of cups is kind of cool. I wish we could see the face. And then 10 of cups feels very pip to me. Okay. I don't know guys. Um. Here's the thing. I like the the majors for the most part a great deal. Um, I I don't really like the court cards as a whole. The minors feel very pippish to me, which is not always my favorite thing. I'm really conflicted about this deck. Like I guess I was expecting to either love it or hate it. I wasn't expecting to be in the middle. I wish that these card backings were different. I don't. Like, is it supposed to look like faded wallpaper, I guess? But I don't like it. And I love the Darkwood Tarot backing. Like, as time has gone by, I like the Darkwood Tarot backing more and more. This makes me want to get out my Tarot of the Haunted House and work with it. It doesn't make me want to work with this deck. <laughs> I hate to say that. This is first impressions. We'll see what happens. I do really like the Majors. I do, I do really like the majors and I'm intrigued to see how the deck reads because the deck could read really beautifully even though I don't love my experience from the artwork perspective as much as I do. Again, not to compare, but Darkwood.
I can't tell if she was rushed or she wasn't like sure where she was at with the court, uh, court cards and the minors. So she just kind of went really basic. I don't know, but I feel like something is missing, I guess. Let me know your guys' thoughts. I mean, I love Abigail Larson's artwork, so I'm going to give this deck a try. I'm going to work with it. I don't dislike it. I guess I'm just left feeling... <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I guess I'm just left feeling like a little perplexed and a little confused. Um, it's not fully what I was expecting. And I time will tell if that's a good thing or a bad thing. So... This has been the unboxing of the Hara Tarot with artwork by Abigail Larson. Let me know your thoughts down below, guys. As always, I am sending you so much love and many blessings.